I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, and today we're with Dr. Jack Nilsson of Compact Tenna. You've seen some of his antennas on our channel, and we've done some testing and have really liked them. In fact, several of our members have purchased his antenna as well. But we wanted to get with Dr. Jack today and talk a little bit about what are we bringing to Hamvention this year, Dr. Jack? Well, thank you so much, and I appreciate everything that you have done, Brian and Chris and El Cara, and the videos that you've done and the testing. Oh, thank you're you welcome. so much. Today, I've actually brought all of my models with me. There are 10 of them, essentially. Wow. And there are a few new ones. So this is, again, as you already know, all about making a very small antenna with high performance, which was not possible with standard antenna technology. So here comes this patent of compact antenna. And it all started with the mobile antennas, the little seven and a half inch dual band or tri-band VHF right. UHF antenna. So you could get in and out of parking garages, yet still have good performance. Right. And it actually amazes, surprises and amazes people just how well it really works. And then there have been a couple of new ones that I brought with me here today. Right. So one of the uh, antennas that uh, you're pretty proud of is the LMR1. Yes, that's actually a new one because, see, as much as the tri-band and the dual band was enjoyed by the ham radio operators, um, um, public service and, and federal government came forward to me and said, wow, this is so good. And even some people have taken the Steam 3 and compared it with the other manufacturers in performance in the public service, police, fire, military, and it worked better. So, so they said, can you make one specifically for the land mobile radio community? And what frequencies are we talking about there? Well, see, that's amazing. Because the, if you could, you would want to make an antenna, again, with short with high performance, but you would want to have one that would cover what the, 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 the Motorola and the Raytheon and the Harris radios do on all their bands, I which see. is like almost impossible. And the only antennas out there that do that are quite large. So the answer to your question is VHF 136 to 174. Mm -hmm. It's amazing bandwidth, right, of any antenna. And specifically 150 to 162 concentrate, because that's where most of what they do is. Right. Okay. Next would be UHF. Government likes a lot of UHF. Military likes the edges. So you'd, I had to do it from 380 all the way up to 512 which, by the way, makes an amazing GMRS antenna. Yeah. It's not cheap, but it's great, okay? Most of my antennas are very competitively priced, even though they're all made in the USA, as you know. Right. But that one is commercial pricing, so it's a little bit more, but it's an amazing GMRS antenna. So that's that. And then they wanted that 800 megahertz, right? But the 800 megahertz has expanded to such a wide frequency coverage now, all the way from 750 to 960. And it does it. So there's a lot of geometry, a lot of science and technology that goes into the LMR1. And uh, DXE and HRO have just come on board. And uh, it's the NMO mount, just like the other ones, right. NMO. And folks, one of the things again that Dr. Jack likes to point out is again that size given the frequencies that it's able to interact with. That's just amazing. Yeah, and on my website here, and thank you so much, Brian, our uh, presentations I've given at the near the top of the website. If you want to know more, how do you do it? In a real nutshell, watch this in 15 seconds. Right. <laughs> watch this, uh, if I can do that. Eliminate the losses that you have with matching systems. Put all of the matching within the intent itself. Number two, make sure that that radiates an efficient signal that doesn't get grounded out. Number three, make it of seating rather than wire so you increase the bandwidth back that you lost. And finally, actually number four, create um, phase delay within the antenna so you get a diverse electromagnetic field, essentially elliptical polarization, so your flutter changes from this to this. And all of that makes sense to a lot of people but me. So uh, we're going to move to uh, the, uh, the plus model now. What I like about this, Dr. Jack, is we can use this as a base station antenna, can't we? Yes. So as much as the 7.5 inch antennas worked really well in 95% of the hilly terrain and urban and all of that, when you went to the mountaintop and you demonstrated this, it was a little bit less than your really long antenna. Of right. course it was. That's line of sight. Right. So the, so the question was, can you give us a little bit more? 
so that even on the mountaintop, you know, it would compare to the very tall antennas or even exceed? And the answer is yes, and that's the plus. That's a 2M440 plus. It's an inch and a half taller, gives you a little bit more gain. Now, no matter where you are, non line of sight or line of sight, you got it all in there. Plus, it handles more power. 100 watts raised. So, oh, this is 100 watts. 100 versus watts. 85. 85. Yeah. And this is conservatively rated. Understood. And this base mount and everything with the radials is a part of that package? Well, that's for the base station, right? right. Yeah, you, they're separately sold, but it's a package for base station. Very easy. Why did I develop my own counterpoise? There are other radial kits out there, but when you look at 2 meter, 220, because you can put that antenna on there, 440, and you use the radial kits that are out there, and you look at SWR as one specification and criteria, and the other is performance, which has to do with gain and elevation coordinate pattern. They're good here, not good there. Really good there, not so good there. I needed to make the perfect counterpoise, so I did. This is the perfect counterpoise, plug and play, put the antenna on there, no tuning, no tuning people, you're ready to go. Nice. And then I can't uh, get away from this booth today, this time's very precious. Let's talk a little bit about the micro beam. I just think that's an amazing looking thing. And Chris and I were talking about this the other day, given the rally that we just did, and we need some more directionality with some of our antennas. This might be the might fit the bill. Well, yes, this was developed. This is my baby. This is it just just debuted here at the Dayton Hamvention 2022 because. Um, you know, now now that we started squeezing more and more out of this patented technology, you know, there are people that are they're real enthusiasts. They are DXers, simplex, repeaters. You know, they love reaching out even in normal propagation conditions, you know, 100, 150 miles. Right. I'm one of them. So I have this in my attic, okay? Everything is thrown into this in the technology. You got you got you got the monofiller, Tesla-like, spiral coil, magnetic field resonator, the, the compact counterpoise, all this comes in the box. It's very easy to put together. You've got a frame that's that weight-centered. You've got full weight loop reflectors. Everything's perfected. You wind up getting the performance in a micro beam that you would normally expect from a very large beam antenna. I see. It's so small that you can fully assemble it and literally get it, not, not have it in attics, but get it up into the attic. Right. You can also, you don't need large rotors. You can use a TV rotor or a very inexpensive ham rotor, okay? You can put it on a chimney mount. You can put it on the, uh, on, on a pole in the backyard. You know, it just, um, and it, it has everything. You know, other antennas, you know, that are two meters 440, they have the two meter elements and the 440 elements and they do it different ways. Some of them try to have it in the same polarization and it's really challenging and especially when you get to tuning it, you gotta tune the 440, tune the turn meter. Sometimes you gotta go back and forth. Some companies gave up on that, says no, we're gonna cross, yeah. right. okay? and then maybe do this so they get slant on both okay and then and then some say we're not even going to try to use a diplexer kind of thing up there with a single feed too much bother we're going to use dual feeds okay well this is a single feed there's no tuning at all it's plug and play and what's the rejection except where you want it that's an excellent question because not only is gain is important, which is what you get out of the front, this is 10 dB mean equivalent gain, but it has tremendous side rejection and back rejection that you would only expect from a larger antenna because of the full wave loops. So the front to side is 15 dB, the front to back is a full 25 dB. Wow. It has a 120 degree, 3, 3 dB down, which is half power beam width, so that's 60 degrees to each side. So it's still broad enough that it's not so tight that you might lose it, you know, right. or be on a lobe and you think you're on the main lobe. I think that's just going to be an interesting antenna to test somewhere down the road. And again, <laughs> we appreciate Dr. Jack's time for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I'm KY4 BDP, KY4 CKP's behind the camera. And we have Dr. Jack, call sign N8NDL. N8NDL. I appreciate you, Alcara, Dayton Hamvention, and my resellers, HRO and DXC. Thank you so much. Take care.